I'm Froggy, and here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup. This week, our dolls need an arcade. So we put together some of our favorite crafts so you can make an awesome one. From video games to a photo booth, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Our mini dolls just love the photo booth from my world. However, our larger dolls can use a bit more room. Ugh. In hindsight, this probably wasn't the best idea. Ugh. So we are gonna make our own using recycled cardboard, white paper, scrapbook paper, bamboo skewers, or wooden dowels, printables from our blog, fabric, and glue. I start by cutting a piece of cardboard for the base of the photo booth. Measure and cut two pieces of cardboard for the sides. Then taking the base, measure and cut strips of cardboard for the front. Then placing one of the sides near the floor. Now I cut another piece of cardboard that is the same width as the floor and wide enough for the dolls to sit on. Cut two more pieces for the sides and another for the front. We glue the sides and front together, cover with paper, cover the cardboard for the top, and I'm using a scrap piece of fabric to add a little texture. Glue the top to the sides, trim it with strips of paper to make a bench. Then place it on the cutout for the floor, sit a doll on top, place a doll on the bench, take one of the side walls and a cell phone to find where to mark and cut out an opening for the camera. Cover the cardboard that will be facing the inside with white paper. We use our checker printable to cover the floor. Cut out the printables from our blog. Glue them onto the wall that has the cutout. Then begin gluing the sides together to form the photo booth where the inside can be seen from the back. Cover the outside with paper. I trim it with strips of metallic paper Cut a bamboo skewer or wooden dowel to fit across the inside of the box. Cut a piece of fabric. I can glue or sew the material over the wooden dowel or I can push jump rings through the material, slide them over a wooden dowel, glue the wooden dowels on the inside to make a curtain. Use printables, cardboard, and paper to make a sign and glue it to the top. Glue printables on the front for decoration and for where the photos come out. And if I take another one and cut out a section, fold it in half, glue it on, applying glue only to the sides, then our printable photos can be slid underneath and removed. Glue the bench inside so the dolls have somewhere to sit to take a photo. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make an arcade video game machine for a doll using a tissue box, scrapbook paper, glue stick, cardboard, and beads. I start by opening one side of the tissue box very carefully. On the back side of the tissue box, I use a doll as a guide to make a mark at the waist. I draw a straight line across at my mark. I cut down the sides to the line. I fold and crease on the line drawn. I cut a portion of the top at an angle. I use a glue stick to glue scrapbook paper to the front and sides. I trim off the excess. I trim off the top tab and then I trace and cut 
a piece of cardboard that I can glue to the back. I begin covering the top of the inside with black scrapbook paper. I glue this portion down at an angle. I cover it with black paper, fold over the top. I bend it again and then cover it in paper. I glue small pieces of scrapbook paper to the side to hold it in place. Glue on a picture for the screen. I use scrapbook paper and beads for the controls. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make a claw machine for a doll using two tissue boxes, scrapbook paper, extra cardboard, plastic from packaging, fun wire, or a pipe cleaner, beads, a small box. If you're having trouble finding the right size box, you can try stacking together several pieces of cut cardboard. Small toys like squinkies, or toys you may find in a gumball machine, and glue. I start by measuring my doll to the tissue box and I make a mark right at her waist. I turn the mark into a line that goes all the way around the box. Cut on the line drawn. I place the other tissue box on top. I measure it just above my doll's head and continue just as before. I remove the remaining plastic lining from the box. I expand the front opening. Cut out the sides to make the frame for the top of the machine. I glue a piece of scrapbook paper to the back wall and I added a little bit of mirror scrapbook paper to the back wall as well. I cut pieces of clear plastic then glue them into the box using a low temperature hot glue gun. If you do not have a low temperature hot glue gun you can use a standard shortly after turning it on or tape. I glue the two tissue boxes together. I cover a small piece of cardboard from a cereal box and a small box with scrapbook paper. I bend the edges of the cardboard, make small cuts at the corners to make a box. I plan the layout for the front of the machine. I trace around the box that I made and cut out a hole that is slightly smaller. I cover the lower half of the box and scrapbook paper. I cut the paper for the hole. On the back side, I fold the sides back and glue underneath. I glue the open box on top, glue the covered box to the front, cover the edges with strips of scrapbook paper or duct tape. I glue a piece of black paper to the bottom. I trace the top onto some cardboard from a cereal box, cut a border going around it, make small cuts at the corners, fold on the lines drawn, glue at the corners, make a hole in the top, cover the outside with scrapbook paper, repuncture the hole to make the top. To make the claw, I use a long and short piece of fun wire I wrap the short wire around the end of the long one. I bend the wires at the end. Slide a bead over the other end and glue into place. Put the wire through the hole in the top to make a claw that can move. Use scrapbook paper to make the coin slot. Beads for the controls. Fill it with small toys. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make an updated arcade game for our dolls that can be used as a phone stand so we can play real games. Using printables from our blog, recycled paperboard, recycled cardboard, paper, paint, beads, and glue. I start by printing out the printables from our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com and we will put the link in the description box below. We print out a total of four sheets that can be used as a template. There is a left-hand side, right-hand side, 
the top of the arcade machine, including the screen, and the bottom. We also included a few freestanding printables in case you would like to make your own designs. And we have two designs available on our blog. Our retro design that we call Frogcade Games and our super cute froggy design that we titled Froggy Stuff. And I don't know if these are supposed to be frogs. I was just trying to make something that was really cute. They actually remind me of Meeps from Roblox. Once the printables have been printed, carefully cut them out. And I cut very slowly so that I make sure to stay on the line. After cutting them out, I place them onto my workspace in the order that they will be assembled. And for the most part, they are on the printables in order. I just went back and added another piece to go under the controls. And it can be found on the printable for the right-hand side. Now that we have all of our pieces cut out, we can use them as a template for the paperboard. Take a recycled paperboard box like a cereal box and cut it down the side and across the bottom to open it up so it can lay flat. Place the printable on top, starting with the sides, and carefully trace around it. Cut on the lines drawn. I place the paperboard cutout onto my workstation and repeat with the other side. Once both sides have been cut out, it is time to start on the front. So I take the first printable, which is the very top of the machine, place it onto paperboard, trace around it, remove the printable, sketch tabs on both sides, and in front. Cut on the lines drawn, line up a ruler to the tab. I use a mechanical pencil without any lead and score along the line, turn it over, and score it again so that we can fold it over and it has a nice sharp edge. Repeat on the other tabs, place it onto our work area, and repeat for the next printable, which happens to be the sign, so we have to make a few small changes. After cutting out the paperboard with the tabs, I have to cut the side tabs a little shorter to fit the side of the arcade game. Then I cut out a few more pieces of paperboard without the tabs to glue onto the front to make it stronger. Then I am ready to move on to the next piece, which we cut out with the tabs without any adjustments. And the same goes for the screen. For the control boards, I cut three layers of paperboard without tabs for the solid printable and seven for the other. Stack and glue the layers together. Then I go back to cutting out the paperboard and adding the tabs. For this piece, I added tabs to the sides, bottom, and top. Then for the next one, I added them to the sides and bottom. And for the last piece, I only added the tabs to the sides. Now that everything is cut out, we can start to assemble the arcade game. I take one of the sides and the top, glue the tab onto the side of the machine, and I'm just using a glue stick to glue them together, making sure to line up the edges. Next, we add the sign and we glue on the side tab, then glue the tab from the top behind it. Once the glue has dried, I take the next piece. This one has a slight angle, so I glue the tabs to the side, then glue it to the tab underneath the sign. And all of the pieces should fit together and interlock using the tabs. And I just patiently hold them until the glue dries. The piece we just added has a bottom tab, and we need to make sure it is folded forward then we can attach the paperboard for the screen, fold the bottom tab of the screen or monitor forward. Then we are going to skip over the next section for the controls and attach the next section. Remember, this one has tabs on all four sides. Then continue adding the paperboard just as before until I reach the bottom. 
I take the remaining side and glue it onto the tabs to create an arcade game shaped box. Now I am going to take all of my paperboard and paint the edges. For more support, I cut and glued together a few pieces of paperboard and glued it underneath for a base. Turn it around and glue cardboard across the back to brace it. Paint the base, then paint around the edges of the layered paperboard that we will use for the controls. allow it to dry. For the retro arcade game, I painted the edges black. And for our cute little green Meep game, we painted the edges white. Once it has completely dried, we can start gluing on the printables. I glued down the printables for the controls. The thinner one should be solid while the thicker one has the printed buttons. Glue them together, staggered, leaving enough space to fit the cell phone creating a ledge for the bottom of the cell phone to rest against. Begin gluing the other printables onto the box. And I pretty much started in the same order that I put the box together, with the sides first, then the top, the sign, underneath the sign, the monitor or screen, skip the control panels, then add the front, the piece underneath, and the bottom of the machine. Over the last two tabs, glue on the control panel, glue on beads to make the controls 3D, to make an arcade game for our dolls to play. And if we want our dolls to play a real game, we can lean our cell phone against the back wall to use as a monitor. And I might even use this as my new phone stand. And you're done. Happy crafting! have arcade games for our dolls, let's make an easy to store arcade using poster board, scrapbook paper, and glue. I often use poster board as a mat to protect my workstation when crafting. And today I am going to recycle some of that poster board for this craft. And when I don't have poster board laying around, I purchase it from the dollar store two for a dollar. Each one measures 22 by 28 inches. I'm using three, and I start by folding each one in half by lining up the edges and creasing the opposite side. Now, when folded, my poster board measures 14 inches by 22. Repeat on the other two poster boards to make the walls and floor of the arcade. And when given a choice, I prefer to use white poster board because it tends to be made of a heavier weight paper, making a sturdier wall. But since I really want to recycle this poster board, today we are going to make it work. Now I am going to take one of the poster boards, fold it in half again, 
so that it now measures 14 by 11 inches. Completely open it up so that it can lay flat. On the center crease that is pointing up, cut along the line. Stopping at the center. So that when I cross these two panels over each other, it creates one of our corner rooms. There is a small overhang on both sides. I am only going to trim off this one. So I draw a line, then neatly cut on the line drawn. Place the shorter side under the longer one to make a corner room with an extended floor. I am going to use the cut off piece of poster board as a guide to trim the floor on my third piece of poster board. I line it up on the edge and use it like a ruler to draw a line all the way down the poster board. Cut on the line drawn so that the floor can now fit inside of our corner room. I lay all of the poster boards flat onto my work area with the corner room in the middle. Line up the sides, leaving a small space in between them. Glue scrap of paper over the fold by applying a generous amount of glue, then place the paper over the gap. Stopping at the center crease so that only the walls are attached. That tiny gap makes it easy for me to shift the walls to create a corner. Repeat on the other side with the third poster board so that all three poster boards are connected. To see the layout of the room, I bend the third poster board over and make a crease, then bend the floor and stand it up. I take this bottom panel and place it on top. Take the shorter one and place it underneath. Bend the first wall back so we have a long wall, then a room that goes back. Continue to cover the walls with scrapbook paper. I'm using a brick print on the long wall and a blue stripe on the other. Cut strips of paper and glue it around the top for a trim. I added a white border and it really helps to bring the room together. Now for the floor. Right now, this side is a little shorter than this one. So I trim it down to make them match. I glue down a bright multicolored paper on this side and I used a white border between the wall and floor. For this area, I am going to use a wood grain scrapbook paper and cover each piece separately to complete the basic room. Now let's take it a step further. I cut a piece of black paper, glue it onto the back wall, glue a colorful picture above it, cut strips of black paper, fold over the sides to look like this. Then on the sides, move about a fourth of an inch down and fold them back so that it makes a pleat. Repeat on the other side so you have a raised portion, then two lower sides. Repeat to make three. Then we take the two that are on the outside, fold the outermost side under to make a smooth outer edge. I take them over to the panel that comes straight from the back, glue the one with two outward facing tabs right in the center, making sure the glue is only applied to the tabs. Press down so it flattens when gluing it in place. Glue down the ones for the sides to make bumpers for a small bowling lane. Use paper to add a few more details. I found a miniature bowling set at Michael's and I have also seen one at Target. Place the pins in the back so the dolls can play a real game of bowling. <laughs> And when they finish bowling, we can switch the floor to make room for other games. 
And because of the way we made the bumpers, they just lay flat underneath the floor. So we can use crafts from previous videos, like our doll ping pong table, the photo booth, and of course, our new arcade games. Add some tables and chairs from previous videos so the dolls have a place to sit and have a snack. And when playtime is over, remove all of the accessories, lay the walls flat, folding the floors up, and it can be neatly stored away until next time. And you're done. Happy crafting! for joining us for this My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time. Bye! Yeah.